This week on Archer's Choice. We are staying at home. And when we can actually go ahead and hunt a little whitetails at home, we're gonna do it. We've been trying to create better habitat, better management. Hey, it's Halloween, woo! We're heading out, we're gonna get out. Ralph X Sherry left. He's a big bear. What do you say? We let the beam and fly. Wait, get him where it hurts. This is a beautiful bear. Hey, welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. This week we are staying at home. Now that's a rarity for us. It is, we travel quite a bit and when we can actually go ahead and hunt a little whitetails at home, we're gonna do it. You know, for years we've been trying to get better, create better habitat, better management, and, and let, let's be clear now when I say management, you know, we're, we're not specific on, on the age structure but or, or what we're talking about. Right. When we get friends over, if they shoot the biggest thing they ever wanted, if, right. You know, if it's a six point or an eight point or whatever it is, if it trips their trigger, go for it. You know, most of you, we've said it, is we don't have a big tract of land. Right. We have a little 20 acres here, or 10 or 15 or 30 there. And I mean, so we've what we've tried to do through the years is, you know, we've created food sources with our ecology food plots. We've cut timber. Right. We've added water holes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've tried to do so much to enhance the habitat. Right, so that that way when they do come through, maybe they don't want to leave. Right. And, right, and because you don't have a lot of big land is, you know, sometimes you can't control it. So right. we're, all, we're all about, let's go out and have a good time. So let's, let's go deer hunting. let's just do that, shall yeah, we? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's just keep going. If y'all come down here, we'll cross the creek because I think we're going to turn left, he said, didn't he? Okay. Yeah. Sitting right here. I don't see the second one by it, but pretty nice. Definitely, uh, you can definitely tell where the squirrel's been gnawing at it right there. and Right there as well. You can see where the teeth have been going at it, but pretty nice right there. You know, it's crazy how shed hunting became, has become so popular, but right. the other so, thing shed hunting is great for is reading telltale signs. You know, old scrapes, old rubs, trails and everything trails. that maybe you didn't go into your area to investigate. Right. You didn't want to contaminate it. You didn't want to screw things up, but shed hunting allows you that. And as long as you're locking in these points or waypoints or whatever else, boy, it's going to get, it's, it's, it's just a great map to make you more successful the following season. We, it was about four o'clock and we said, you know what guys, it's time to shed hunt. So we shut down the office and we all come out here and Micah, look at the two he found. Good the sad part for Micah is they don't leave the ranch. <laughs> the ranch. <laughs> but he gets good pictures and he'll film us shooting them this year. We got this one. Young deer, but nice deer. Great potential. We walk this whole draw down to my crossing and head through our big bedding area in the hardwoods. What we're doing is we're setting up this small plot in a major bottleneck. Big ag fields over here, and we're gonna put in a small plot here just to slow them down to possibly get an opportunity to shot. So putting the food plot here will draw them, not necessarily staying in the, in the ag fields, but coming through here. So positioning your food plots in certain locations will absolutely give you a higher advantage or an opportunity at getting some shots on some of those deer.
you know, you and I have found spots, even shed hunting, that you're like, oh, I wish I could put a little food plot here. Right. So what it does, it takes you some time, you know, grab our woods equipment, we grab our tractor, our chainsaws, we go in, we clear an area, make sure that you have sunlight so you can grow a possible, you know, food plot. Right. Make it a killing site. And now, this, this past year, RJ, He's oh. old enough and grown up enough now that we got him out there doing it while we were doing oh. other stuff. Yes. So now we have RJ who's out there helping us with the plots and getting all, working on the land for a better success. And for he's all of becoming us. a steward to the land and yes, the animals. I yep. mean, it's awesome. The bottom line is yes, it's a lot of work, but I'm going to tell you something. There is nothing more relaxing. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not a farmer, never will be. Right. But there's nothing more relaxing by doing something and seeing the results, and you do. And I mean, that's well, what I love about it. The thing you gotta remember is when that food plot's starting to come up, that root system is shallow. So an animal comes in and takes that whole root system, it takes the whole plant. Gone. It doesn't nibble off the top, it takes the whole plant. You know, using a hot zone, a wire, is definitely a great tool. Right. But you've gotta also remember, those wires can't be touching any of the vegetation, because it's gonna short it out. A lot of times in that summer pattern, your bucks are just starting, you know, you're starting to watch them in their, in their development stage in velvet. Right. And, and I mean, it's just a fun time to get out there, sneak in there, get your optics. You know, we got our spotting scopes and we just enjoy watching them. Now, because we don't have a lot of land, doesn't mean that we're going to keep them all. Right, because actually a lot of times just by even putting out our cameras early in the season on like an early plot. Yep. You know, you're going to get some great, you know, some great photos of some deer and you may never see them once nope. season comes but you know that you're helping them move along. That's it. Hey, it's Halloween, woo! -hoo! We're heading out, we're gonna get out. Ralph actually left, and it's my turn to get all my stuff put together. I've got everything ready to go. Oh, I dressed up as a bow hunter. All right, let's see if we can't go shoot a Halloween buck. That would be cool. Ah, all right, you know what? Let's just go. Let's just go. Keeping things clean, scent free. Happy Halloween. We're on near home, Northern Illinois. It's October 31st. It's definitely cooler out. We had a major front come through, high winds and rain yesterday. Still pretty breezy out now. It's like 38 degrees outside, I think, something like that. Oh, it's chilly. We got extra clothes on today for sure. We've got a north northwest wind just blowing our scent behind us. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed and see if we can't get something on one of these trails in front of us. There's just something about sitting in the timber and you never know what's gonna happen or where they're gonna come from.
we've got a north northwest wind just blowing our set behind us so we'll just keep our fingers crossed and see if we can't get something on one of these trails in front of us there's just something about sitting in the timber and you never know what's going to happen or where they're going to come from wind uh, and you can see we are totally dressed up for Halloween yep it's Halloween and normally Halloween's a pretty good day around here so we got our fingers crossed smelling and he's been running hard look he's got no no belly on him yeah I'm gonna try grunting yeah he don't care look at he's got the real thing look at his tarsals
What a morning. We had this guy come in and he was he was a nine point that we were hoping to maybe have an opportunity at and it just ended up everything worked out perfect. Um, yeah, things some things didn't work out really well, but hey, we got them down. We got fresh venison here at the Seance Rural Household and we're rocking. Got them. There was a the crows actually were flying all around, and when we the one that they got was gonna unload this buck right out of the back of there uh, for us. They, the cane <laughs> went in, they never found it. All right, we took the broccoli off. Yeah, look at that. Look at these babies. Look at that. Ooh, this is called how to spoil the guys in the office that's at right. lunchtime. Look wow. at this. That's like a photo. We need a photo of that one. Like, that is awesome. We do need a photo. We do need a photo. I don't have my yeah, phone. I have mine out here. Mm -hmm. Oh! Yeah. You're running right at the end of the morning. I'm going to stay back. Mm -hmm. Instead of the mm -hmm. then I'll be okay. My northwest west, west, only okay back. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine this fresh back strap? Look at how beautiful that is. Bone up, I see. Congratulations. Thank you. You know what? I mean, to shoot any animal on your own right. property is such a rush. It it's is. a personal thing. Now, we did have a hiccup. We had a little bit of a hiccup, and sometimes it happens. You try to hunt and film and get everything synced up. Sometimes it just doesn't happen as well as you want it to. But the reality of it is, is you're working as a team, and you do the best you can. Right. Hey, it is. You got a beautiful buck. I did. You got it on our own property. Filled the freezer. That's right. Filled the put freezer. Antlers and on the wall. you know what? We can still hunt in Illinois. We still That's have, it. You know, we so still got more seasons. We do. So, you know, maybe in another show we can show some of oh. that. Mm. You never know. Hey, thank you guys for watching this week's Archer's Choice. We'll see you next week. Same time. Same channel. Right here on, on the, the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.